Grace and peace to you this day. I am Reverend Jennifer Mitchell, and I pastor a church in Carn City, First Presbyterian Church. I have been doing a series with our children and youth and anyone who would like to participate in these little short readings and devotionals and conversations, and they surround the topics of how to talk to your children about social justice and racism. I know that those two terms are very loaded with meaning um, and not always good meaning, not always positive uh, words are associated with those, but I want us to have this safe space that we can sit down and read stories that are about social justice and racism, but about how to unpack those words, about how to make those words something that is okay to talk about, um, and how the stories we read and that we hear from these different authors are ways to help us learn about each other, learn our differences, learn our likes and dislikes, learn how we are the same, and learn how we are different, but also learn how we are still one body of Christ, and what God created us for was to live with each other in peace and in grace and in love. So I hope that you will continue with this journey, on this journey with me as we move forward. Our next book in this series is a book entitled, Let's Talk About Race. And it is from the Newberry Honor book author, Julius Lester. And it is illustrated by Karen Barber. And it is also published by Harper Collins Publishers. I invite the children and the youth and anyone else to hear the story that this author is going to tell. And as the story ends, we will also pair it with what we find in scripture, about what this book teaches us and about what scripture teaches us to help us live in a more peaceful environment where we can talk about such issues with positivity instead of negativity. Let us begin the story. I am a story, so are you. So is everyone. My story begins the same way yours does. I was born on, take me for example, I was born on January 27th, 1939, in St. Louis, Missouri. I'm kind of old, huh? How does your story begin? Many people and many events are part of my story and yours too. The names of our parents and where they were born, whether or not we have brothers and or sisters. I had a brother who was nine years older than me, but he is dead now. What kind of work our parents do or did my father was a minister. My mother was a housewife. My story and yours have many elements, such as favorite food. Mine is fish. Hobbies. I like to do crossword puzzles take photographs, and cook. Favorite color? Red. Or maybe green. But I like orange and purple, too. I think my favorite color is all of them. Religion? I'm Jewish. Nationality? I am from the United States. My favorite time of the day? Night. Oh, 
there's something else that is important about my story. It's important a part of yours, too. That's what race we are. I am black. What race are you? Just as I am a story and you are a story, and countries tell stories about themselves, race is a story too. Whether you're black like me, or Asian, Hispanic or white, each race has a story about itself. And that race is almost, that story is almost always the same. My race is better than your race. Some stories are true, some are not. Those who say my race is better than your race are telling a story that is not true. Why would some people say their race is better than another? Because they feel bad about themselves. Because they are afraid. Because. But there are other ways all of us, even me, even you think we are better than others. I am better than you because I live in whichever town or country you live in. I am better than you because I go to this or that school. I am better than you because I am a boy. I am better than you because I am a girl. I am better than you because my dad or mom makes more money than your dad or mom. I am better than you because I am white. I am better than you because I am black. I am better than you because I am Hispanic. I am better than you because I am Asian. None of these stories are true. Are they? I want to tell you a true story, but I need your help. Here's what I want you to do. Take your finger and press them softly against your skin right below your eyes. Be careful and don't poke yourself in the eye. Okay, now press gently until you feel the hard bone right underneath the surface of your eye. Now, if your mom, dad, brother, sister, or a friend is close by, Ask them if it is okay for you to touch them. If they say it is okay, then take your fingers and again press softly at the same place beneath their eyes. Press gently until you feel the hard bones right beneath the skin. Now press somewhere else on your body, on your arm, on your chest, on your head, press anywhere you would like on your body and press until you feel the hard bones beneath your skin. Beneath everyone's skin are the same hard bones. If you were to go outside with me, your skin without your skin on, and without your hair on your head, turn the page and see what you 
would look like But you want to know something? If I went outside without my skin, my mustache, and the hair on my head, what little I have left, I would look just like you. And you would look just like me. Suppose, just suppose, one day, we, I, everyone in the whole world, decided to take off all our clothes and all our skin and all our hair. Then we would do what we would normally do every day. Go to school, go to work, play and shop. Everything would be normal except we would look like each other and couldn't tell who was a man and who was a woman and who was white, black, Hispanic, or Asian. Which story shall we believe? The one that says my race is better than yours? Or the one we just discovered for ourselves? Beneath our skin, I look like you and you look like me, and she looks like her and him, and he looks like him and her, and we look like them and they look like us. When I look at you, which story do I see? Do I see only the color of your skin, the shape of your eyes, the texture of your hair? Do I look at you and think I know your story when I don't even know your name? Or do I look at you and wonder What's your name? Where were you born? When were you born? Where do you live? What do you like? What don't you like? Gee, maybe we like and dislike some of the same things. Your race is not all that you are. My race is not all that I am. Yes, I am black, but I am also a man. I am of medium height. I have a deep voice and a loud laugh. I love to laugh. Do you? I live in a big house in the woods in a small town. I like pancakes and macaroni and cheese and, and, and. I am so, so, so many things besides my race. To know my story, you have to put everything together, everything that I am. Like, I bet you didn't know, I have asthma. Beneath the skin, we all look alike, you and me. I'll take off my skin. Will you take off yours?
the end. So what did we learn from this book about let's talk about race? We learned that each of us has a story. In our stories, there may be some similarities. And in our stories, there may be some differences. For instance, I was probably born in a different town, in a different year, on a different date, and in a different month than you were. I went to different schools than you did. I have different parents who did different jobs. I like different things. I like to take pictures of nature. I have a dog. I'm highly allergic to cats, so I don't have cats. I love to cross stitch and draw and do anything artistic. I am a minister. I am also Caucasian. My skin is white. I am Presbyterian and I work in a Presbyterian church. Those are just some of the few things about me. But if I were to take off my skin and you were to take off your skin, whatever color it might be, underneath we are all bones and muscles and we are all the same. We were all created in the image of God. That means that God created each of us to reflect and to be God's love in this world. We all have different things, but when it comes down to it, none of us is better than anyone else. We just have differences. I want us to look at a scripture passage in our Bible. It comes from 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter, and I will be reading verses 6 and 7. Verses 6 and 7, what happens before this is that God has told Samuel to go and anoint a new king for Israel. So Samuel is on this quest, and this is where we hear God's words. When they came, he looked on Elbad and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is before me. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks on outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. The word of the Lord. God looks not at what we look look like physically, not the color of our skin, not our likes and dislikes. God looks upon our hearts. God sees who we truly are as his children. And God calls us and encourages us to look upon others, upon our brothers and sisters of all different skin colors and races and nationalities and places of birth and religion, and see not those differences, but see who they are as a person, to have conversations with people, to get to know who people are, and not just to judge them based on the way they look. I want to invite you as you go through your week to ask someone you may not know well, a couple of simple questions. Some of those may be, what is your favorite color? What is your favorite activity to do? Do you like to eat pancakes for breakfast? Or eggs? Or Pop-Tarts or cereal? It might be that when you start asking those questions, 
and learning who someone else is in their heart and seeing their heart like God sees our hearts, you will probably find that you have more things in common than you do that are different. Let us pray. God of our lives, God who looks upon our hearts and not upon what we look like on the outside, help us to engage and to ask questions of people that will help us to truly get to know who they are and not just what they look like. Help us to ask them where they came from, what they like, who they are, so that we can continue to know each other on a deeper level and help create this world that you have been entrusted to us to be a place of love and safety for all of God's children. It is in your son's holy name that we pray this prayer. And all God's children are invited to pray and say, Amen. I will see you back here next time for our next story. Goodbye for now and blessings.